right, hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Launchpad. My name is Grant, and today I am joined by the Duchess and her lovely cat, Kendra. Hey, how you doing? Say hi. <laughs> oh, that is the cutest like, cat. I love that so much. You were just telling me right now that the cat like lets you know if it likes your tracks. <laughs> he does. He always sits on the on the sub. If it's good, if he doesn't, he goes and he hides. But yeah, he's so happy to be here. He just uh, wants all the attention. He loves it. He wants to be. He wants to be part of the launch pad. I love it. He sure does. Well, <laughs> welcome, welcome to you, and welcome to Quavo. We're excited to have you. I'm excited to sit down and to chat with you. Um, I know we were having a tons of really good conversation before uh, we started this off here. Um, but I want to start it off by kind of just giving our listeners a chance to learn a little bit more about you and your background and kind of how you got into music in the first place. Um, you want to go ahead and like take us back to like, what's what's your story? Why? How, how'd you get into like the dance music scene? Yeah, for sure. Quavo, go on. Get out of here. Um, <laughs> Quavo, get down. Okay. So essentially, I started getting into the music scene... Not really until I went to Icon, but before that, my father passed away when I was in college. So essentially, that. when that happened, I decided to just distract myself completely from everything that I was feeling and just start learning Ableton because it seemed like the most complex jaw to essentially understand. Um, That's just kind of how I am. I'm... <laughs> I just try to find like the hardest thing to do and do it. And once I did that, um, I started making music and everything was really cool. And eventually I learned that I needed to go to school. So once I graduated from uh, U of I, I decided to go to Icon Collective in Burbank, California. And it just made such a difference. Honestly, like anybody who's trying to do music production, like you should really go to Icon because I didn't know anything about music theory. And I walked out of there just at least being able to not be dependent on things like splice and, you know, sampling. And mm. um, I was able to like write music myself. And yeah, so that was super important in me getting to where I am today. And yeah, essentially everything that has been truly significant in my career is the Duchess has kind of come as a result of Icon. In fact, my latest track, Fuck Me Up Inside, I wrote that um, as the first track ever since I uh, graduated Icon. So like the day after I graduated, I was like, finally, I have free time to write mm -hmm. something. And then I went and I wrote Fuck Me Up Inside. And yeah. Then it came out on Fuck Me Up Records not too long ago. So, that's, yeah. that's awesome. I, I'm sure your dad would be very proud of you <laughs> and all the success that's come um, since then. Uh, I want to talk a little bit more about like Icon um, and just the power of like going to that. Because obviously you were just saying that there's a lot of power um, in going to that school and you learned a oh, ton totally. from it. Like what were some of your really big takeaways that you never would have gotten um, if you didn't mm -hmm. go to Icon? Well, I guess the first thing I have to say about going to Icon is I had been dabbling in Ableton for like two-ish years at least, if not more. So I went in with some like pre-existing knowledge, at least on the music and you know how to make it. So that was a huge advantage for me. Um, My biggest thing was I was so dependent on things like Splice. I couldn't tell what key I was in mm. I didn't know how to sing or record anything at all and essentially they go in there and they put you through very rigorous like music theory classes for two semesters and then after that you kind of get to the more fun stuff mm -hmm. but after you get those first through those first two semesters you come out just with so much knowledge um I was just really driven and trying to learn everything that I could because for a year after I graduated from the University of Illinois you know with the intention of going to medical school mm -hmm. I wasn't like trying to take any time to do anything other than learn like I had 
so much time already to just mess around and make music but I went into icon with like you know a mission I was like mm -hmm. I'm gonna learn everything that I can and I try so hard on the homework assignments I was such a nerd honestly if you ask any of my classmates they'd be like he like studied so hard <laughs> I, I love that. I mean, that's kind of what you need to do if you're going to a school like that. You got to give it a thousand percent and really dive into that kind of thing. Um, totally. you, you mentioned like that was kind of where you learned to like record a little bit more and like kind of, you know, yeah. put your voice onto tracks and everything. And I know we were talking a little bit beforehand um, about how like one of your big things is you really want people to know that you're not just a vocalist, but you're also a producer on top of that. And you put a lot of time and effort into both. Like, how do you kind of balance the two of those? And like, what, where do you feel like your strengths kind of lie within each, like within being a vocalist and within being a music producer there? Totally. I think that um, my whole life, I've kind of been singing off and on. My mom always tells me this story about how oh, we had this nanny when I was growing up and she ran up to her one day and said, oh, Kendra can sing. Um, and then I got very into like dramas and musicals and stuff uh, and then soccer. So that all kind of stopped. But then once I was an icon, we were forced to do these homework assignments where mm -hmm. we had to go and write like a song with like a verse, a bridge, a hook, you know, a chorus, and then present it in front of the entire class. And so doing that, I was just so compelled to figure out how to work auto-tune, how to write. Like, I didn't want to present anything that was terrible. And so I really, really honed in on just how to make, like, I don't want to say mediocre, but like, okay, mm -hmm. vocals sound cool. Because I had a good friend in the industry who told me it's not about sounding good. It's about sounding cool. Mm -hmm. And so you can learn to process your own vocals and get them in key and sounding good and also write. You're going to be on a really good track. So essentially, I just kind of started writing over different piano chords. I'm very inspired by like Nessa Barrett, Halsey, Sia. And I'll constantly be going to their pages, just looking for different chord progressions and everything okay. to use. And so I'll take those chord progressions and just like uh, put them in Ableton, try to write something cool. And if it comes out, it comes out. And then I'll write something, sing it. And if I can, turn it into a track. And that's totally what happened with Fuck Me Up Inside. Um, I yeah. I love that. Let's, let's, talk <laughs> about, let's talk about Fuck Me Up Inside because you actually have kind of a... I, well, first of all, I want to let you kind of tell the meaning behind the track before I ask my next question here. Like where yeah. you said that was like the first song you made when you came out of Icon. Um, yeah. And now it's signed to um, uh, Fuck Me Up Records with Alice in Wonderland. Um, but where like what's kind of the meaning behind the track or the meaning that you're hoping the listeners kind of take away from it? Um, I just want them to find something relatable for when you're in a place where you're just like sad and mm -hmm. unhappy and overworked and you don't know what's going to happen whether it's like a toxic relationship or just those days you know where mm -hmm. you wake up and you're like is this all worth it and really the meaning behind fuck me up inside I was dealing with a culmination of problems in my life my cat Quavo that we mm -hmm. met her it was actually very sick with this oh. disease called feline infectious peritonitis and he was gonna die and oh, for wow. 80 days um i had to give him injections of a drug that i got shipped in from china and essentially saved his life um just some crazy stuff you'd really have oh, to look at yeah. but he ended up surviving and there's like it's just a very rare disease. And so I was dealing mm -hmm. with that and just some personal relationships at the same time. And a lot of the time, I don't like to think that I'm writing from myself. I just try to get myself into a place where like, I can accept whatever the universe, I guess, mm -hmm. is, you know what I mean? Like sending me and that's what happened there. And I love that. Does I, that make sense? Yeah, no, it definitely does. I, I really like that. I That's the kind of the meaning I felt when I listened to the track as well. Um, cool. Like it kind of takes you to a place where like 
you feel like very like you're able to feel like your very like sad emotions and your happy emotions all in the same track, yeah. which is kind of a cool thing. Um, and I don't think a lot of tracks really do that. So I totally understand why like Fuck Me Up Records wanted to pick that up and wanted to like make it part of their record label. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about that because, you know, Fuck Me Up Records with uh, Alice in Wonderland. You were telling me. You know what's so funny, though? I didn't even know, like realize until after I got the email saying that they wanted to sign it, that like mm. Fuck Me Up Records fucked me up inside. Mm. I didn't even know. Yeah, was there like, was that the intention was to like create? No, No, okay. It just kind of worked out. I just wrote it, just worked out. In fact, I didn't even realize when I was sending it to Fuck Me Up Records that this track is called Mm -hmm. Fuck Me Up Inside just because I (laughs) I had a million things going on. Mm -hmm. And then once I got that email, I was like, wait, like, this this is is actually so perfect. It was great for them, great for you. I I love that. Uh, Yeah. So you're telling me. Wonderland. You've been a big uh, Alice in Wonderland fan for a while now. You actually uh, had a fun little Halloween costume a while back, too. You dressed up as her. Uh, I think that's like, that's incredible. I love that. But like besides Alice in Wonderland, who are some other artists that were like that early inspiration for you when you first got into the dance music scene here? Mm, definitely Whipped Cream. Mm-hmm. Cause just because I really look up to women who are killing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cruella, Halsey, Nessa Beret, Sia, Diplo, Skrillex. I really uh, like Foster Domus and Yellow Claw and mm-hmm. just all those guys who make like trap and just everything. Um, and also like Metro Boomin. <laughs> He's yeah. really cool too because he's producing for all the rappers but you know I have a lot of inspirations but I guess really I listen to all these people and I try to make the best music that I can in the moment and just hope that you know it resonates with people when I put it out and I have so much more music that I'm trying to put out I'm honestly overloaded with it and I'm so excited just because I feel like you haven't even heard the best of what mm-hmm. there is if that makes sense so well, well let's talk about that then what, what can we what can we expect out of you in the next like we're we're, we're actually at the exact halfway point of the year right now we're recording Isn't this on crazy? july from right i was it's thinking about that the other day yeah we're halfway through 2023 i feel like new year's eve was just the other day but yeah. uh anyways what can it like second half of the year here you said you're sitting on a lot of new music coming up what can what can we kind of expect from the duchess coming up here I think that you should prepare to be ready for anything. Okay. Um, I have, in fact, I have like this whole EP that's like drum and bass themes, but very like pop driven and like lots of vocal effects and lots of just um, mixing and engineering. But also I still make trap. I still sing. I have a little thing that I'm doing with a friend of mine named Zach and like I'm singing on these rock records. Mm -hmm. Um, I also have a lot of mid-tempo music, like a ton of mid-tempo music. And so, yeah, you can expect everything coming from me (laughs) at the same time. So I kind of just want to give everybody um, something that they might like because one time when I was at Icon, I had a friend who told me, wow, like you really made me enjoy this genre that I never listened to. Oh, it's such a compliment. Right? And I was just like, what if I could do that with other genres? So I don't know. I feel like people hear EDM and they're Mm -hmm. just, oh, like EDM, you know what Mm -hmm. I mean? And I'd love to get people kind of more interested in the scene without having it, I don't know, like having a pre-existing notion of what that means. Yeah um yeah so I guess I just love like making music that people enjoy and so as long as I'm doing that we're happy and as long as Quavo is healthy we're happy that that's important right there (laughs) I I love that Uh, I like that you're kind of you know open to just pursuing different types of genres and things like that too because I know when I talk with a lot of people they get very like hyper fixated on wanting to really like specialize or like be an expert in one genre and that works great for a lot of people but there's also like a lot of success that can come from people that are really talented in multiple different genres so like tell me a little bit about that kind of what's the thought process behind wanting to um be like good in a bunch of different genres there 
Um, I guess it's really just kind of what I'm able to make. Mm -hmm. I've had a lot of people tell me, oh, that's kind of like the mistake I made thinking that I could do everything. You know what I mean? Instead mm -hmm. of honing on one thing. And I totally, totally get that. And if I guess if I had to pick a genre to stick to, it would be like mid-tempo or trap. Mm -hmm. But I don't feel like there's any harm in doing like something like a drum and bass pop EP or doing like a techno EP or just mm -hmm. doing something different because all my inspirations like Alice in Wonderland with Cream they're doing everything and they've proved that they can't so I just don't feel like I'm gonna pick anything I think it works for some people who are super invested in it but as far as I'm concerned I'm making different things every single day I make pop ballads I I rap I oh you rap <laughs> too I rap and okay. I like do like you know Chris Lorenzo mommy like mm -hmm. I do those types of vocals on house songs and then I'll like okay. produce them out so I don't know like giving myself a genre just honestly would be doing myself a disservice absolutely um yeah so I guess that's where I stand but like <laughs> we can revisit this conversation in five years oh yeah we're gonna I'm see mad. what so see I'd all the new music that's coming out then and <laughs> yeah i i love that you, you were also telling me beforehand that you um work with other producers quite a bit um uh, you can see like on all your tracks like a majority of your tracks you're working or collabing with somebody else um i want to yeah. ask like what that like what your role kind of is when you step into that collaborative space with people and what it's like mm -hmm. collaborating with different artists and like what they kind of bring to the table yeah, totally. Um, I think everybody has their strong suits. I love when people can uh, collaborate in a very efficient manner. Um, overall, though, I don't like to necessarily get myself too involved in collaborations unless I have a vibe in a sense with the person or you, mm -hmm. it's just much easier when you get to know the person. Like, yeah. Just for example, be here with Caroline with cream. Mm -hmm. We were we became such good friends, like for at least like four months before that record was ever made, produced. We got into a session, and when we got into that session, it was made in like a few hours, and then it was put out like one month later, and it's doing so well. Mm -hmm. And so I think regarding collaborations, I definitely have a bucket list of people I'd love to work with, but I think like establishing a connection mm -hmm. and a friendship with somebody is like super important because it just makes everything else so much easier. And just, you know what I mean? People yeah. are looking at your best interests when you're working with a good friend as opposed mm -hmm. to somebody that you don't know, or like an A&R is connecting you yeah. with somebody that you've never met before. Mm -hmm. Um. But in terms of collaborations, though, I'd love to collaborate with like everybody from just uh, big names in the EDM scenes, even hip hop artists, pop artists, everybody, and just see what comes to be. I love that. That's that's so <laughs> cool. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that track with uh, Whipped Cream, because obviously that's seen a ton of success and like obviously a good friendship came out of it with her as well. Yeah. Um, what was that kind of like seeing all the success that came out of that song or like the success that kind of came to your project from that? Honestly, it gave me so much confidence uh, making that record just because I, for the first time, was kind of put into a situation where... I had label a and R's around me and I had like a limited amount of time to get things done and just seeing that record come together so quickly, so efficiently was really rewarding. And uh, having Caroline just willing to work with me was, especially when I was a fan of hers, was mm -hmm. so rewarding. And what's even more rewarding is to see like that reflect in the numbers and the popularity, like we got some playlisting for that song, but a lot of it comes very organically through like Discover Weekly or mm -hmm. just those weird like Spotify algorithm, yeah. you know, generated playlists. That's exactly that's, how I found it, actually. 
Is it really? Yep, it was on my Discover Weekly. So that's funny that's that so you said funny. that. Yeah. No, when I essentially when that song was made, especially the first drop, I was like, this is a moment and people are either going to really like it or they're just not going to like it at all. But I know there will be a group of people that really like it. And she played it for the first time at the Shack show that she had in Los Angeles unmixed. And I was just sitting up there like my heart pounding and she played it and I'm like that sounds really good and the monster cat Anna came up to me and she was like I get what you mean like this is really sick and then it ended up coming out yeah about a month later so it was just a huge success for me and fuck me up inside with Alice in Wonderland's label that honestly was so it just made me so happy to see somebody like Alice in Wonderland supporting my music like there are Mm. other really really incredible artists that are putting music out on that label and so just to know that she you know approved that song coming out and uh, just values it at all (laughs) makes me feel very happy so yeah I'm just very grateful right now and there's a lot more coming but honestly in this moment I'm just very very happy and everything's going so well and I'm just happy to be here with you Grant and discussing all of this because it's it hasn't been easy but it's really nice to be able to reflect on the good Mm -hmm. um, instead of scrambling to plan and you know what I mean uh yeah so I guess this is uh little moments of reflection and I don't take many of them (laughs) that's that's good I'm glad that we're able to kind of provide that to you in a slight way Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of power in being able to like look back on like your successes your failures and learn from a lot of that stuff so I'm glad that we're able to provide um, a little bit of space for you to do that Um, but I want (laughs) to talk a little bit more about um, because obviously you have seen support from some really awesome women in the industry. Like, I mean, we talked about a couple like Alice in Wonderland, Whipped Cream. Can you talk about what it's like? Because obviously the world of dance music is a mostly male dominated field when it comes to, you know, like DJs, producers, even people like behind the scenes, like women are 100% a minority in the scene at the moment. Um, What's it like kind of being a woman in the scene and like working with other um, really talented women in the scene? Totally. I mean, it's like always refreshing to get into the room with another woman. Um, just joking about things, you know, that a guy can't relate to, whatever. But just in general, being a woman in the industry, if I go to events and if I'm not dressed up as like my artist project, people come up to me and they're like, oh, are you a model? Or like, oh, are you- you know what I mean? Are you this? Are you that? And it's just very irritating because you know that that would never be said to a man. Mm -hmm. Um, But honestly, I just personally think that all you can really do is do the best that you can and work every single day to try to learn something new, try to get better than all these guys, girls, Mm -hmm. whatever. And just show them because eventually you're going to be able to surpass that. But I totally get it. And it's not easy for a woman at all. I think you can be judged very easily, especially with me being like the Duchess. Like I'm very into like things like glitter and like shiny, you know what I mean? Kind Mm -hmm. of like Selton vibes, but a little bit different. And so you get judged very, very quickly based on what you like and so all you can really do to negate all of that is just work every single day and make as much music as you can and work harder than all of these guys and girls because there's a lot of very incredible and talented people out there and really at the end of the day you can say everything you want about being discriminated against but if you don't put in the work to you know do better and Mm -hmm. everything you won't it doesn't make much of a difference so yeah no 100 percent um what, what do you think is something that like i mean because you said obviously it's not easy being a woman in the scene like you'll get things that like men in the scene will never get like i mean you mentioned an example right there but we could go on and on talking about that kind of stuff yeah but like what's something that you know men or just other women or just allies in the dance music scene like what's something that they can do to help um propel these talented women in the scene 
Um, I think giving them a chance. I don't know if you've ever, I think it was actually said in an article. I was a bit confused when I read it. Me and Caroline had said we met at Icon. We actually met on Clubhouse and a uh, whooped cream and a mutual mm-hmm. friend connected us. And she gave me like a chance and got to know me and she knew I came from icon you know it's a good school Mm -hmm. I just think like sometimes giving people the benefit of the doubt whether it's like a man or a woman it really doesn't matter I just think that we're not in these soundcloud eras anymore Mm -hmm. if you want to be put on in like the same age where every single person on this planet and their mom is trying to be a dj <laughs> like you literally need to have a bigger artist put you on mm-hmm. so i think that like for bigger artists you need to take into consideration all of these things and like go and try to find talent and bring them up and just give people a chance because it's funny, I was working with this guy. I reached out to Icon Collective the other day and just asked if anybody could do vocals. And this one kid reached out to me and got me like a, a demo vocal on my instrumental track in about 20 minutes, recorded really, really well. And that's what I'm saying, like just mm-hmm. like reaching out, giving people an opportunity and just letting it happen. Um, and Caroline does a great job with that too. Like she goes and searches for people on SoundCloud. But I think really like people just need to give up and coming artists more of a chance and check your emails and don't ignore everybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> don't ignore every single cold call. Oh my God, I've sent so many cold cold calls in my music career. It's so embarrassing. I have Monster Cat actually. I met one of the guys that I used to cold call. <laughs> once we sign that record can you imagine oh i that's great (laughs) what uh let's talk a little bit about like the power of connections obviously you've you've made some great connections like um who are like i mean we've talked about a little bit about alice in wonderland a little bit about whipped cream like who are some of those other like connections that you've made that you're really um happy that you've made and who are some like connections you're hoping to make in the near future here connections i'm hoping to make in the near future are definitely going to be people more involved in either the hip-hop game or pop game, like Halsey, Sia, Miley Cyrus, all those, you know, women that are constantly on, like, you know, the pop radio. Mm -hmm. Um, But also, I, I just really love to, like, learn not even work with but just like learn from people like Diplo or Skrillex and just like be able to have a conversation with them and like just get some advice and feedback because I think that that's super important um I definitely made some cool connections coming out of Icon for sure but I think the biggest connections that I've made have come from going out And, you know, I told you my ideal night is like I'm in bed at 10 p.m. after I'm watching a movie and take a bubble bath and drink wine. But sometimes you do need to go out and stay out until two o'clock in the morning, if not later, and go and meet these people and go to EDC and spend that money on that hotel. Because if you don't, then like, what is all of this for Mm -hmm. and when your friend randomly hits you up when you're spending the money to live in LA you should go because Mm -hmm. at the end of the day like what are you out here for you know so mental health is important but so is networking Mm -hmm. um I think that was my biggest lesson because the biggest things that have ever happened for me have been from the connections that I've made um you know and not like cold calling people yeah no, I'm so, I'm glad I'm glad you brought that up because I think there's a lot of there's a lot of power in obviously like focusing on your mental health and there's also a lot of power in like getting out and networking and it's like it's yeah. tough for a lot of people to be able to find the balance between the two of them. Um, I I kind of want to ask how did you like find that balance for yourself? Like how did you find the balance of like obviously like prioritizing your mental health because nothing's more important than like how we feel and how we feel about ourselves kind of thing. But also there's a lot of power in like 
going out and meeting people and making all these connections. And like as an artist and especially an up and coming artist in the industry, there's kind of this like undue pressure that you need to go do that and you need to do that consistently. And you might be doing yeah. it a little more than you think. And I, I'm friends with a ton of like up and coming artists that like they tell me about this and they tell me about these situations where they don't want to go out or they don't want to be doing this thing, but they feel like they have to. Yeah. Um, and they're sacrificing like pieces of their mental health because of it. So like, mm -hmm. how do you kind of find that balance there between the two and like what kind of advice would you give to those people that are kind of struggling with it right now honestly like make a pro and cons list if you really don't want to go out like make a pro and cons list and be like what can I benefit from this is this worth like losing my entire day tomorrow and being you don't even have to be hung over if you don't drink I know plenty of people who don't who don't drink but I personally just have a schedule and I need to follow it I love to go to the gym I love to do certain things but you can't always do that so I think it's important to go out but you don't need to go out all the time you can like pick and choose what events you do go to and where you do choose to put yourself out there and I think like over time you should start to learn like okay like maybe this wasn't that beneficial but this is mm -hmm. um and yeah, I mean, it really also depends on your location. Like if you're in the middle of the Midwest and like Idaho, like you don't need to be going out every night mm -hmm. to meet people. If you're living in LA, like I totally get it, but you know what I mean? I think it's just making an educated guess. Is this worth it? Or am I just like going out to do this because I want to feel cool or just you know portray a certain image of myself um because I just personally know how hard it is to get back into create into a creative flow and it takes like a couple of days mm -hmm. once they break that so yeah I guess that's what I would have to say just try to make smart decisions and you'll learn yourself over time nowadays I really like I <laughs> just don't go out Unless my friends drag me, they'll <laughs> drag me out and be like, come, come with, or they'll hit mm -hmm. me up. After they hit me up like three times, I'm like, they're not going to invite me again. So I have to go. So <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, let's talk like general advice then. Like what like general advice would you give uh, to people kind of trying to get their foot in the door or trying to um, break yeah. into the scene for the first time here? Um. You know, when I was at or like listening to that question from big artists, I always heard like put music out, put music out. But I actually don't feel like that's the answer anymore. I think that you could do things like teasing things on TikTok or teasing mm -hmm. things on Instagram. Um, Personally, I've had a lot of uh, interest in my records come from me just posting Instagram stories of things that I'm working on and just scrolling through the Ableton file. Um, but that also comes from networking and going out and meeting these people because not a lot of people like to be cold called. I just say like, take your shot, email as many people as you can, like look at me I have a collab with Whipped Cream and I used to be a huge fan. And if she goes back to her DMs from years ago, you'd see me being like, yeah, girl, get it. Fire sign, fire sign. So I just like wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> it's going to be okay. Just like do everything you can because there's really no excuse. Just send your music out. You don't have to put it out, but send it to everybody and it will work out. And also gratitude, just practicing gratitude. It's very, very important. I do it every single day. I write in a journal and I say everything that I'm grateful for. I ask for what I'd like. And then I write a message to my dad just so I could feel more connected mm -hmm. to him. But yeah, I've been doing it for three years and I've asked for every single thing that has come to me and more. And it eventually comes to me. So it's very highly recommended I like that I don't know that's weird <laughs> no I, I I like that and I'm, I'm really happy you brought up uh, just the overall idea of gratitude too because uh, yeah. in moon landing that's something we're really big on um, we're just really big on you know just being very thankful for all the 
um, opportunities we're blessed with all the time. Like I literally ask if you go and watch any interview that I've done or anybody on our team has ever done, this is always a question we ask in every single interview. So yeah. this is not, not something that I'm just like, this is full on. I was planning oh, to ask this Grant, anyways. Wait. Let me what show are you, you grateful? I I want to I want to know. I want a peek in. Well, I don't want to like actually peek into the journal, I, but I no, want I'm like, like to not going to. But every day, I fold up. This is just in my desk drawer. There's so many papers in here, and that's I all write. like things you're. This it just says like dear God, God, higher power, mm -hmm. whatever you believe mm -hmm. in. Like thank you for waking me up today, Quavo too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Thank mm -hmm. you for my mom, my house, mm -hmm. like being able bodied. And, yeah. You know, just things like that. And so and I'm like, yeah, I ask for what I want, but I just feel like having a roof over your head is huge. And having like people who love you in your life that are alive are very huge. And so the more that I've become grateful for those things, the more that I've like had abundance come into my life. And so I think like if you really ask for a piece of advice for up and coming producers, I know it might sound like kind of crazy, but that's probably my number one piece of advice. Just practice some gratitude and just be thankful for what you do have. And I promise you that and believe in it, too, because like everything will be filled with abundance in your life once you start to do it and believe it. Oh. Or maybe I'm crazy. Who knows? No, I don't. I don't think you're crazy at all. I think that's an amazing thing. And I think more people yeah. should get in the practice of doing that. Like maybe they don't necessarily need to write down every single day the things that they're grateful for. But maybe it's yeah. getting in that practice. Maybe like when you're in the shower and you have that moment of just time, like away yeah. from your phone or like away from distractions, you'd like totally. take that moment to just think about like the things in your life that you're happy about. So I'm yeah. glad that you do that. Um, that's like one of our core values over here at Moon Landing too. So I'm yeah. I'm happy that we're we're both aligned with that kind of thing too. Um, obviously, yeah. like, what are the what's like the biggest thing you're grateful for in music and then outside of music right now at the moment in music what am i most grateful for <sighs> there's so many things that i'm grateful for i think just seeing success mm -hmm. after so many years of you know trying and I don't want to say failing because none of it was failing but I've had mm -hmm. many artists Learning. before you know this the Duchess is probably like my fourth artist name that I've gone by mm -hmm. um you said you went by your your real name at one point did, and people couldn't yeah, pronounce it point. this was like very early on mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you look up my like legal name you're probably gonna hear a lot of weird music but um yeah in music I guess like I'm grateful for things like just Ableton Icon uh my good friends like Whipped Cream and Alice in Wonderland putting me on her label mm -hmm. Oliver over at Fuck Me Up Records uh, working with me and Tracy the digital designer helping me with my visualizer um outside of it I'm just like very grateful to be healthy, alive. I feel very fortunate. Um, just like the fact that I can walk, breathe, talk, mm. sing. <laughs> These yeah. are like things I'm grateful for. I don't know if that's too vague, but no, that's that's good just... because that's like those are things that people just take for granted every single day like yeah. they're, they're the things you don't think about like because not not everybody has that space not everybody has a roof over their head not everybody is able body like you know these are things that like you don't think of every single day so like I'm glad that you're in that practice of you know being grateful yeah. and thankful for all that kind of stuff on a daily basis that's awesome totally thank uh, you I, I appreciate that he's you're gonna like turn this thing off be like okay this bitch is crazy <laughs> no definitely not uh I do want to ask though about like some upcoming things that you have coming up I know we were talking you have a show coming up you're actually opening for whipped cream give I us do. give us the details on this has been this has been officially announced right we can talk about it yeah it's, okay perfect. it's officially announced okay. um everything else has not been officially announced so I can't 100% talk about it but I can like vaguely talk about it mm -hmm. Um, aside from maybe some self-releases that I might do just to spice everything up, mm -hmm. 
but I'm going to be opening up for whipped cream at Nova in San Diego. Um, what day is it? I think it's on October 6th. Nice. Okay. And I think in that set, you can expect from me just a lot of unreleased music, but also bass heavy, mid tempo heavy music, trap music, and just you're going to be able to experience the Duchess for the first time live. Um, I'm just so excited to be DJing again. I've been mm-hmm. focusing on producing for so long and in college. I DJed a lot, actually, towards the end of my college career and ended up opening for Lil Yachty. And oh, wow. uh, I know it was so insane, but also Zomboy, too, with like a local club. So I've kind of got a taste of both mm-hmm. scenes. And I definitely think I'm going to kind of be blending like hip hop and EDM. That's okay. kind of my vibe. Like, <laughs> that's the Duchess vibe. But yeah, I guess like you'll just kind of have to see. Like I promised it'll be a great time, a great experience. And I'm so excited to be going to San Diego. I have so many friends down there and we're ready. We are ready to go. Heck um, yeah. Friday, yeah. October 6th, Nova in San Diego. Be there, <laughs> yeah, be square. Come through. Come what, through. My what? friends are pregame, so it'll be fun. Oh heck yeah. That sounds like a good time um what and anything else you want to like shout out or talk about before we wrap things up here um i don't think so nothing that i can officially talk about right like at this second okay however i just want to say thank you to alice in wonderland for allowing me to release my music on her label i am such a fan and have been since she released her run album in what was it like 2016 it was a while ago yeah yeah and so you're just like such an inspiration and I'm just filled with gratitude and Oliver too it fucked me up Rex thanks for linking you and me Grant and uh getting us this interview and yeah, you can just expect a lot more coming from the Duchess. Lots of different genres, lots of trap, mid-tempo, everything you've liked so far. More vocals, more vocals from other people. And yeah, there's just a lot to come. Stay tuned. I really can't sum it up for you. Uh, I love it. I'm <laughs> excited for it. I'm excited to see all the success that's going to come your way in the next uh, next Thank couple you. years here. Um where's the best place for people to stay connected with you honestly instagram instagram go to yeah if you follow me and you have been and you're like engaging with me i'll add you to my close friends list and that's where you'll hear like a lot of my unreleased music i always post unreleased music onto my close friends story so if you want to hear what i'm up to and see like what i'm doing in ableton just follow me and you know you'll see but other than that just stay tuned i will have something coming by the end of this summer so yeah okay all right i'm excited for it i'm excited for the new releases the upcoming shows uh just it sounds like you got a lot of exciting stuff coming your way um on top of all the awesome success that you've already had well i don't want to take up too much of your time uh, but i really appreciate you taking the time to sit down with me and uh talk with us and be here on the launch pad with us so Thank you, Kendra. I appreciate you. Um, if <laughs> there's nothing else, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Um, if, for all those still listening, thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of The Launchpad. My name's Grant, and this is The Duchess. <laughs>